Hello everybody, if you might remember the old playthrough of this game, I've played it way back, uh, <laughs> before things uh, escalated on YouTube and stuff like that. Welcome to Sucker Spirit, yet again, every person has a dream they wish to pursue, yet as people grow up, they often come to realize the truth. Dreams are nothing more than fairy tales. At least, that's what most people say. Then, what about those who do end up accomplishing their dreams? Are they merely incredibly lucky? <laughs> Every man has a dream he wants to accomplish. However, there is something really important you should know, my boy. A real man doesn't give up on his dream, no matter what overwhelming challenges he might have to face. I still remember those foolish words my dad used to say, but... Despite their silly nature, I found myself inspired by them. Ever since I was a young child, I have been interested in martial arts. It didn't matter whether I watched a match on television or read a manga about some heroic martial artist. It has always been my dream to become a martial artist. One day, of course, it was a bit childish of me to think that I could become a hero simply by learning martial arts. Even though I already understood that superheroes were nothing more than figments of my imagination, I still had a desire to use my strength for the sake of others. My name is... Kushiken Takaharu, a 17-year-old rising judo star, and no, that's not me bragging. I'm actually about to take part in a tournament two weeks from now that could make or break my career on an international level. Of course, I was excited about the opportunity to finally accomplish my dreams and represent my country at a sport that I love. But the same excitement always made me feel incredibly nervous. And while those worrisome thoughts haunted my mind, a familiar voice resounded from outside the window. Oi! Takakun, get your butt in gear! <laughs> oh, I love this. Okay, okay, I'll be right there. Kuehu, Kiyomi. Kiyomi. Not wanting to keep Kuyomi waiting, I quickly dashed toward the front door to let her in, not even realizing that I was still in my pajamas. Hold on a second, Kuyomi. Gotta grab my shoes before we head off to school. Really? I never realized our school. Our school had a strict uniform or sleepwear policy. Nice jammies, by the way. Did you borrow them from your old mom? For a moment, my eyes drifted downwards, noticing that I was indeed wearing my pajamas. I let out a groan of annoyance and marched back towards my room. Bah! There's nothing wrong with my jammies. Golanaya is a famous comic book hero in the West. Besides, not everyone prefers to sleep naked like you. Mumbling those words, I started stripping out of my clothes. Not particularly minding the presence of the girl behind me. Th that only happened once. You know very well it was super hot that night, and jeez, warn me before you strip naked in front of me, you idiot. <laughs> you 
didn't seem to mind it when we were little. Maybe you want me to turn around instead. No, stop. Don't make me kick your ass. I decided I had teased her enough and quickly pulled on my pants, proceeding with the remaining two items of clothing. Before I was you dressed for school. Besides, I had a reason for being so distracted. You've been distracted a lot lately. What's going on in that hollow skull of yours? It's that upcoming match. I have no idea how anyone can remain calm with an international career is at stake. I wouldn't be surprised if I had made up enough doomsday scenarios to fill up the apocalypse genre. Oh, right, the judo thing. I'm sure you'll do fine. I've seen some of your matches, and you kick butt, and of course, if you're really worried, you can always pray. Pray? What? Don't tell me you don't know. It's one of the school's legends, apparently. There's some shrine out in the forest that, if you pray to it, brings you good luck. Ichikawa-san said that his sister prayed to it the, the night before her exam, and she got a perfect score. A shrine that is said to bring you good luck. Sounds like bogus to me, but at this point, I'm willing to try anything, I guess. I, I'll ask Ichikawa-san about the location. I'm not exactly in the mood to get lost in the forest and end up a modern-day Tarzan. Well, whatever. If you do go looking, at least send me a message to let me know. And will you hurry up? We're going to be late. Again. A hero is never too early. Nor are they too late. They arrive precisely when they are needed. But for the sake of avoiding detention, let's hurry. That's a wizard. That's a wizard, not a hero genius. How can one person be such a sports nerd and such a geek at the same time? Let's not forget the Casanova and Man of the Year candidate bits. There are important details. I doubt you'll part of five for either of them. Pajama boy. Anyway, let's let us boldly go where everyone has gone before. To school Ugh, Nerd <laughs> Several hours later. Uh, uh, uh. Later that day, I finally got a chance to talk to my classmate about the location of the shrine that Koyomi had mentioned earlier. Gym was the last thing on the schedule for today, so once people got ready to go home, I approached the guy. Hey, Ichikawa, is it true that your sister discovered some shrine that is said to bring you good luck? Oh! Yes, want to date her, but uh, even though I do have to admit that she's very attractive, I'm afraid she's already going out with someone. Not to mention you're not her type. I already got my hands full dealing with Kiyomi. You can keep your sister to yourself. Joke aside, I'm more interested in that shrine. Did she mention where she found it? I didn't know there was anything near the forest, aside from the dojo. Oh, well, uh, she said something about it being near a river, and quite high up, to be honest. I wasn't paying too much attention when she was going on about it. I mean, she was wearing this top, and it was tight, and... Stop 
Stop. I seriously don't need to hear the details. I, I, and I doubt anyone else is interested. So, do you know anyone who might have heard about the shrine? Are you guys talking about that lucky shrine out in the forest? The one and the only. According to Ichikawa's sister, there's supposed to be one near a river. I don't know about that, but there's this fiery girl at the Asasakura Dojo who knows more about it. Wait, are you talking about Ar Ariya-sama? About, about this tall, ridiculously strong, and super scary? That's the one! Oh, in that case, I believe I could still be of help. Takaharu kun? I know where that place is. Of course you do. We both do. You just want to tag along, don't you? I don't think a Arita Senpai will appreciate you visiting her with your usual tricks in mind. Do I need to remind you what happened last time? You tried to peek at her after she she finished practice? Blood, sweat, and tears. Sh shut up! I don't peep on the ladies. That's slander, you know. I should sue you. I would never look up, look upon Ariasama's glorious body in any state of nudity. Oh, so you haven't seen her naked yet? I, I I've, I've seen a bit of a side boob, but the hole I found didn't really let me get a good look, get a good view of. There we go, someone called the cops. <laughs> Ichikawa, the peeping Tom, has confessed. I perfectly patted Ichikawa's shoulder as I turned around, grabbing my bag in the process, and prepared to leave. Thanks for the tip, Ichikawa. I'll let the judge know you helpful during the interrogation. This is unfair! I was coursed! I, was, I won't say another word until I speak with my lawyer. <laughs> Once school was over, I decided to take my chances with a little bit of intel I had managed to obtain from my classmates. If memory served me right, Ariya Senpai would be practicing at the dojo today. Of course, I knew her. She was a judo student just like myself, but for whatever reason, she has been refusing to compete in any tournament for a while now. Ariya Senpai, are you around? I shouted her name as I parked my bike, looking around for any sign of the girl. Yeah! Hi yeah! Yeah! <laughs> Follow the shouts, and you will find her. I grinned briefly as I saw Arya seemingly in the middle of practicing a series of motions, almost as if she was fighting an imaginary opponent. Perhaps now was a perfect opportunity to surprise her a little. I snuck closer, making sure to make as little noise as possible before I reached a hand towards her shoulder. Arya. Feeling a hand on her shoulder, Arya reacted. She grabbed a hold of my hand and, with a loud grunt, shifted her weight, curling and tipping me over her shoulder. I didn't have a chance to brace myself for the impact before I hit the ground like a sack of potatoes. Yeah! <laughs> no one sneaks up on the great Konoichi. Are ya? Oh, Taka boy! I didn't realize it was you. I'm sorry. Are you okay? Konoichi, more like Tasmania Devil. That throw didn't have a shred of mercy in it. There's no mercy in the ring, Taka boy. Better that you learn that you better that better 
Better that you learn that now than in two weeks' time. Let me guess. You want to do some sparring, don't you? I actually came here to ask you something, but I guess a little sparring wouldn't hurt. Oh, what do you want to ask? We've got all afternoon, and I could do with a bit of a break anyway. Where to start? You used to take part in big and important matches in the past, right? Did you ever get nervous before going into the ring? Oh yeah. <laughs> this one time I got so nervous, I hid in the kitchen cupboards until my dad found me and dragged me to the car. Of course, that was when I was like... Eight? Well, obviously I can't go and hide from my match. One of my friends made this stupid suggestion that I go and pray or something. Honestly, at this point, I'll do anything. I'll do anything to calm my nerves a little. Taka boy, are you sure about this? You mean the match? Of course I am. I've been practicing judo ever since I was old enough to walk. This is my chance to finally represent this country and the sport I love. Very yes, seem to think for quite a long time, all the while tapping her jaw with a finger. Eventually, she snapped her fingers and grabbed a tight hold of me. All right, I'll tell you the way to the shrine. I know, but it's going to require more than a simple clap of your hands and bob of your head. You need to give something to the shrine. Something of value. I guess I'll have to think of something before we get there. Thanks, Senpai. I appreciate the help. We? Oh, no, no, no. Taka boy, I'm not going with you. I've got training to do. Besides, you've got to take this step yourself. I could draw you a map and show you an easy way to get back here, but you'll be on your own. You're not taking a long. Not even for a little while. Afraid so, talking boy. Let me just grab some paper, I'll draw all that map for you. After Arya's return, preparations were made, and I followed the directions noted on the map. Surprisingly, it wasn't all that far. However, the hint on how to find my way back in case I got lost, was a bit sketchy. Just look down and you'll be able to see the roof of the dojo from anywhere on the hill. The forest near the dojo was my first challenge to overcome. A narrow, a narrow path coiled along the trees, and nearby was the river Ichikawa's sister had mentioned. I followed Ari gets scribbles with a bit of skepticism, but after an hour or so, I finally arrived at the supposedly legendary shrine. The shrine itself seemed surprisingly well maintained, despite being in the middle of nowhere. It made me wonder if someone could be secretly living there. Perhaps some. Uh, Secret martial arts master. The thought of a hermit living and living and hiding within the shrine in order to prepare himself for an upcoming battle between good and evil started to dwell in my mind. I guess it's too good to be true. I sighed in annoyance at the fact of, at the fact that aside from the shrine itself. The grounds of surrounding it seemed completely abandoned. There was no way anyone could be living there. For the time being, I decided to focus on the reason behind my visit. It only took me a few moments before I gathered the courage to approach the building. Once inside, I found a rather fancy-looking altar. 
of sorts at the back of the room. I guess this is the thing everyone's talking about. Silently, I folded up the map I had been giving, putting it inside my bag. I approached the altar. I was kind of s skeptical about the whole thing, about the whole religious aspect, so I wasn't too sure if this was actually going to work. I don't even think luck will do me much good in a match like this. In my opinion, there wasn't any room for things like luck in martial arts. Judo is all about using the knowledge you have gained through training. Of course, a good amount of talent also helps. There is simply no room for something as superstitious as luck. Clearly, this was going to be a match where my experience and talent will be pushed to their limits. Nothing more, and nothing less. How curious. The boy doesn't believe in superstition, and yet he stands here, surrounded by the very thing he denounces. Upon hearing the voice, I looked around, trying to find the source, but there was no one to be seen. Who's there? Quite the cliche question. But the right thing to ask is, where am I? What are you talking about? Show yourself! Not yet. Entertain me for a little while longer, would you? This is a place like no other. Why did you come here? If you don't, if you do not believe in things such as luck, I came here to prepare myself. Oh, do enlighten me about what this something might be that you are preparing yourself for. I felt a little bit annoyed as the questions continued, but maybe if I kept talking to her would be able to find out where she was hiding. I'm preparing for a tournament, a judo match. J judo? What might that be? Uh, seriously? You don't know what judo is? It's a highly skilled combat art. <laughs> so you're aware, hesitant go into battle and came here in hope of finding the resolve to fight. I'm not sure about the warrior part. How fortunate. It just so happens that there is a need for one of your kind. My kind? A hero of this... Sh a hero. This shrine brings fortune to heroes such as yourself. However, every great hero must sacrifice something in return. Sounds like what the others mentioned. Your version sounds better, though. Laughing briefly at the story, I decided to play along and clap my hands together in prayer. So what's next? Do I offer my lance or something? Don't be silly. Money is of little importance to a hero. For you, the sacrifice will be something of much greater value. I will be looking forward to see what Destiny has in store for you. As if on cue, I began to feel nauseated the moment the girl's words reached my ears. My head spinning wild wildly. Slowly, I staggered backwards, collapsing onto my back. 
as my vision grew blurry, the sound of approaching footsteps could be heard. Good luck, hero. You're going to need it. Despite my attempts to get back up, all I managed was a brief look at the girl. The sight of horns and a tail left many questions, but before I had a chance to utter even a, wor a single word, my consciousness succum succumbed to darkness. Uh, dot, dot, dot. Uh, uh. Rays of sunlight stirred me back to life, a groan of annoyance leaving my mouth while I tried to get back onto my feet. I felt a bit dizzy, but the first thing I noticed was that I was no longer at the shrine. Instead, I looked near and it looked like the forest near the dojo. Of course, my first thought was to look around to see if I could find the girl from before, but not a trace of her presence remained. To make things even stranger, the path that I had followed amidst the trees seemed better maintained than I remembered. I should probably head home. That thought was cut short when the sound of several female voices could be heard nearby. Get back here! Higajin! Stop them at once! Just what do you think I'm doing? I'm chasing them! I'm trying to stop them! <laughs> I think they know what's missing on this summit. Keep running, little one, and we might just make it. Just when I thought this day couldn't get any weirder, the sound of heavy footfalls could be heard nearby. What in the world is going on here? Further ahead, I saw a couple of girls in, the, in, the, in fast pursuit of even more girls. However, there's something off about this scene. That didn't make any sense. Girls being chased had the ears and tail of an animal. And the pursuers appeared to be armed. We have a, we have a katana and a naginata. You can maybe fox! Come back here at once. Return what you stole immediately. <laughs> I think I'm gonna stop here for the day. Oh. This couldn't get any better. Anyway, everybody, I think that's gonna be it. Thank you all for watching. See you on the next session of this. Peace out. Keep on a stealth. Actually, no, wait. Wait a minute. Give me back my <laughs> Talk about... Uh, uh, talk about having her to say give me back my panties. Oh my god. Hey, 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 How could you say something out loud like that? <laughs> Oh no. Help save us from the rampaging women. <laughs> As I watched the girls run off, I couldn't help but find myself struggling with the decision. To just leave them be. Just to just leave them be. While I didn't know what in the world was going on, the two girls armed with rather realistic looking cops, surely gonna be real had me worried. I wouldn't very well call myself a hero if I let something like this go by without acting. Okay, now, now I want to... Okay, okay. My face is, my face is getting redder right now. I don't know why I... Anyways, see you next session.
So, hi, we're back. I think I already read this already. Um. My hands are shaking right now. I can't very well call myself a hero if I let something like this go by without acting. I'm so going to regret this. Mumbling and annoyance, I chased after the girls. Pika J, go around to the left. Right. Now, thieves, I'm going to personally drag your sorry butts back to town and have you both put in the stocks. Maybe I'll even show you how it feels to run around without any undies on. Uh, yeah, although I must admit, having a breeze down there does feel kind of nice. Feeling fresh and tingly. 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 Here, Jay. Goodness, don't you have any shame? This isn't about you. It's about our undergarments stolen. And these two criminals being brought to justice. Vanessa, <laughs> your 
hurts. My head hurts. Okay, little one. Hey, guards. If you're so desperate to have your underwear back, then here, catch. Stop it right there! However, before I was able to interrupt the conversation, the silver hair girl tossed something into the air. Oh, no. Dude, Takiharu, you just... The timing. Whatever it was, it was flying, flying straight towards my head. The two samurai girls instantly grew flustered. Uh, I can't see. Who the hell tosses a... Peeling the items off my face, I raised here looking like Professor examining an important sample while the thieves made their escape. Pink bra and lacy blue panties? Oh boy, I knew this wasn't going to end well. <laughs> you there! Are you in cahoots with those crafty foxes? And hand those back immediately! Those are those are evidence of a crime and not and not for anyone else to touch. Drop the panties right now. I'm innocent until proven guilty. It's one of the it's one of the golden rules of the court. Is stop pointing those weapons at me so I can hand over your undies without being turned into shish kebab. But no! Stop! Shut up! Just drop the evidence and walk away. I am Susukino Mayo Mio, Chief of the Village Guards, and I am ordering you to drop what you're holding right now. I don't know any village guards. I seriously doubt a cop would go around dressed like that and wielding a wielding a katana. Katana. More importantly, the ground here is muddy and dirty. Are you sure I should drop the evidence here? I mean, I could, but... Hi! Yeah. Before I could react, the pink-haired girl lunged towards me the pointy end of her naginata, aiming for my gut. My reflexes caught on just in time, and I was able to palm away the spear as it sailed through the air. I struck upwards, wooden shaft of the weapon, sending it up into the air and causing the girl to lose her balance. Narumi! I did not order you to attack! Fine, fine, I'll give them back. Jeez, just my luck to find a bunch of crazy girls with weapons. Extending the hand that held the undies, I tried to hand them over as something that I would soon end up Reading. <sighs> huh? You think I'd fall for something so simple? Fool? You may have fooled me once, but I wouldn't let that happen again. The woman swung her weapon wide, arcing the thick wooden pole into my side before I could dodge. She then lunged forwards and grabbed me tightly for my arms around behind my back, leaving me with sore ribs and in a prone position. I could have fought back, but I figured it would only lead me would only lead to more fighting, with the possibility of ending up stabbed. I decided to remain passive. The sword wielding girl stepped forward and grabbed the from my head triumphantly. Hmm. Methods might be crude, but they, they do get results. Hikaje. Hikaje. Time up. We'll bring him in for questioning. Probably knows where those pesky thieves are hiding. 
Right. And people wonder why criminals want to resist arrest at all costs. I'm going to this weekly as the girl with the naga Nagi Nato tied my wrist together with rope. I soon felt myself dragged by the duo for the city. Surely runs away out of this forest. You two will stop this act of yours and I'll let me go, right? As much I look look like to a fool around, I have more more I have more important things to do. City? <laughs> not taking you all the way there. You'll be spending the night in the village cells, thief. Who are you calling a thief? I'm the victim. First I get the I get undies tossed in my face, then I had to deal with physical abuse. Not these accusations. Besides, there's no village around these parts, it's a city. You know. No Toshi? Silence! He get it, Jay. If he speaks again before we get to the village, you have my permission. You have my permission to knock him unconscious. Sunray <laughs> <a> tyrant. <laughs> That's funny. And that's how I ended up on my way to a jail cell, cuffed and dragged by two girls, both of who I started to suspect were crazy. When we exited the forest, alarms set off in my mind. The city I had lived in my whole life, it was gone. You've got to be kidding me. Wasn't in Tsuki no Toshi. Where the hell was I? Hey, no talking. Come on. I don't want to be. I don't want to buff you that much. Kinda. Maybe a punch or two. I just want to know how the heck you blocked my strike so easily. Your attack had a lot of power behind it, but it was kind of predictable with the right movement and enough force. That's the result you get. Anyway, I'll play along for a bit. Where, the, where, the, where in the world are we? This clearly isn't my hometown. I mean, the buildings look more like they belong in some sort of classic samurai movie. Huh? What the heck is a move vein? This is Harumaru. Been here forever. Hagaje, I thought I told you to silence him if he spoke again. Actually, you told me that I could, but you didn't tell me that I had to. Must be tough being the subordinate of something like that. Be quiet, or I will silence you for good. This time it didn't seem to be an idle threat. The girl had unsheathed her katana and was now resting the edge of the blade against my throat. I was already starting to regret, to regret having played a hero earlier. Hopefully there will be someone with more common sense in the village. Several minutes later... Dot dot dot. Uh, uh, I soon found myself confined within a small room. Stern-looking sundere of a girl glaring down at me, while the other girl, who was apparently called Narumi, seemed to have softened up a little. From what I had gathered in their conversations, I had called the village elder to help oversee my questioning. What purpose did these thefts have? Or are you just some pervert who gets of sniffing girls' booties? <laughs> I ought to castrate you. I already told you, I was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. Not to mention anything more by you. We'll probably 
smell sour. Oh god. I couldn't see too well from the cell where they had put me, but I was almost certain I could hear the roomy laughing nearby. Sukino Dono, please calm, calm down. Calm down. You brought him in to learn the reason behind his presence in the forest, didn't you? As correct, Elder Asama, I believe he was working together with the Fox Spirits to steal, steal, um, panties and other undergarments. Objection! Huh? What are you objecting to, young man? The evidence surrounding the defendant's accusation was fabricated. Oh my god. Memory son, would you please answer this question from the judge? Was defendant that is myself anywhere near those girls while you two were in pursuit of them? Hold it. Just who are you calling a judge here? Lower your voice or, or I will strike you down. Strike you down. Hey, Maya son, maybe the whole anger accusation thing isn't working. This guy clearly isn't a bandit. We could just ask him why he was up there in the woods. If he has a valid reason, then sure. If not, then he's clearly a panty thief. <laughs> and we'll use him as a punching bag out in the yard. Finally, and here I thought this was about to become a turnabout case. I sighed deeply apart. Partly amused by my own act, despite the seriousness of the situation. Who would have ever thought mimicking characters from games and movies would end up getting me out of trouble? As long as I didn't become an ace prisoner, things would hopefully <sighs> things would hopefully turn out for the better. A wise idea, Rumi John. How about you start by giving us your name? Gushi Ken. Gushiken Takaharu. So, what were you doing in the forest when these two were chasing the thieves? I'm not entirely sure myself. One moment I was praying at a shrine hidden inside the forest. Next thing I knew, some girl, some weird girl was talking to me. A girl. Yes, a girl with horns and a tail. I know it sounds weird, but I could have sworn I saw her before I must have fainted. After that, I woke up somewhere in the forest. Somewhere in the forest. Sikuno Dano, Narimi chan, do you recall the stories behind the shrine near our village? Forgive me, Elder Sama, I do not recall. I know it's a place of high spiritual energy, a sacred place, but I can't remember the details. Sorry, Grandfather. That shrine belongs to Suyuri, a powerful spirit that has been watching over our village for as long as anyone can remember. Unlike the fox spirits, we tend to avoid going too, too deep into the forest. I still think I could get rid of those pests once and for all. The 
you would just let me go in and find our home. It's probably hidden in some damp cave on the hill or some run-down old house. Humans and spirits rarely mingle, even if they meet with good intentions. The fact that this lad says he saw a spirit means there is a chance he was there for a reason. Not to mention, did you take a good look at him yet? He seems disorientated and his clothes look foreign. He did seem to be talking gibberish earlier. He claimed to be from a city near here, but there's nothing like that around for miles. He was also talking about something called a movie, and he used some fighting techniques that I have never seen seen before. He is still a pervert. I'm not a pervert. It's perfectly natural for a guy my age to be curious about certain things. Besides, if you're talking about uh, how the panties ended up on my face, I had nothing to do with it, Sundere Tarrant. What did you just call me? I had to smash you to pieces, brat. Oh, wait now. Wait now, then I think about it. Those two foxes didn't look like they were just abandoning them, but Grandfather, what does all this mean? I can't be certain. However, I believe it is unlikely that he's working together with the fox spirits. Still, I have never seen, still I have never heard of any human to come upon a spirit such as Tsuyuri. I dare you say he might not even be of this world. Wait, are you trying to say I'm in a different world now? That would be the most logical explanation. In what world would that be considered logical? But, but, but I have an important I have an important tournament to participate in two weeks from now. Well, no one has ever experienced something like this before. We will have to think of how to deal with you. Or if it is even possible to get you back to your own world. In the meantime, a knight in the cell won't hurt. He did assault a village guard and he resisted arrest. You can stay here until he rots for all I care. I suspect the elder will wish have a talk with you soon. J, I am going to clean myself off. I suggest you do the same. I would take the uh, I would take offense for applying that I stink, but that was one hell of a run. Those fox bears run fast. I would still like to know more about those techniques, Takaharu san. If you do happen to stick around might want to go a few rounds with you. It's not like I'll be going anywhere for the time being. It is only for a few hours while we discuss what to do with you. A person such as yourself would end up causing quite the commotion amongst the villagers, so it is necessary to convince them that you mean you mean them no harm before we re 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 release you. That was how I found myself stuck in a jail cell with the people responsible for my situation left to deal with personal errands. This sucks. As if being sent to a different world wasn't bad enough, I'm stuck stuck in jail with only my only company being. A pair of beautiful, magnificent, majestic Fox sisters, you lucky boy. Pair of beautiful. Wait a second. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna. No, 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 no. I wanna continue this off. <laughs> Yahoo! Hi there, Panty Boy! <laughs>
Thank you all for watching. She's out. Keep on stuff. Later. Back. Oh God. A familiar face appeared at the cell. A blonde girl with golden eyes. As I watched, she flipped over and landed in front of the cell, waving her hands at me. From the side of the cell, another girl appeared. A weary grin on her face. Oh no. Ah, it's the panty thieves. Here to reclaim your hostages. They are already back where they belong. Nope. We saw the guards the guards go into the baths and swipe the maiden maiden silks again. Luck. Luck. Oh no. With that, she pulled out a pair of lacy silken underwear from her sleeve and stretched it out with her thumbs showing off her penny prize to me. You came all the way back and she snatched their underwear again and I'm not sure the Cinderay Tyrant fits that label. The cutie with a katana? be surprised. I happen to believe that she is as innocent as one can be. She seems far too uptight to let any man touch her. Oh my god. As for returning to the village, we have a debt to settle. I smiled weakly as I wondered what the fox meant by depth. I'm not sure what this depth of yours might be, but I think you better leave before those two return. You don't seem to be f You don't seem to be on friendly terms with the samurai girls. Wait. If he doesn't know about it, we can just leave on that one sama. Mako, this is not how we do things. Yeah, man, your actions allowed us to escape earlier. Our, to escape our earlier predicament without harm. This places us in your debt, for which we are now repaying you. Mako, do the magic. Okay. The younger girl walked forward and placed her hands upon the locked door of the cell and began mumbling something that I couldn't even begin to understand, and her hands began glowing brightly. Different worlds, girls wielding weapons, and now Fox girls using magic. Next on the list, I'm going to find a talkative magical sword and end up destined to save the world. That said, I was curious to see what this magic would do to the lock keeping me in prison. <laughs> the glow flared for a moment before quickly fading. There was a hiss and then a sizzle as the lock dripped to the floor in a mess of melted metal. Well done, Mako-san. Mako John. You did very well. Relax for now, alright? I'm not sure what I'm supposed to be the most surprised about. The fact that a girl just melted a steel lock? 
or that I'm starting to accept that this is a this is normal. This level of magic is is extraordinary. Megatron is quite gifted. But as I said, we are here to settle our debt. If you would like, you can we can export you back to the forest where we first encountered you. I do, however, suggest that you decide quickly. The guards do not bay for long. I should know. I have observed them for a while. Well, I don't plan on sticking around, so I so I'll gladly accompany the two of you out of here. Maybe I'll be able to find my way back home. Either way, baby Tammy. <laughs> Machko. Sakura no Machko. Not Tammy. <laughs> Takaharu. Haru. I suggest we keep the introductions for later. Very well then. Takakun. Follow. As I was stepping out of the sail, the sound of a familiar voice boomed in the distance. Thieves! You crafty fox! <laughs> Klepto maniacs! I'll skin you alive! <laughs> I think that's our cue to get out of here. And with that, the three of us started out of the prison. And that's pretty much what happened according to the village door elder. There's supposed to be a shrine somewhere in the forest. It must be the same one I visited before I got caught up in this mess. Goodness, that sounds like a terrible situation. I know that spirits such as Suiyuri enjoy playing with people, but this is... But this seems a little cruel of her. I would speak with her myself, but fox spirits are not allowed near the shrine. Huh, I thought the reason you never go there was because you get all, you get all flustered whenever Su Chan's around. Sh shut up, Mako! <laughs> I didn't realize a panty thief could get embarrassed like that. That may be too good show me the way to the shrine. Somehow the layout of this forest seems different from my world. Which pretty much meant that Arya's map was useless now. You did not understand. There is more to the ways of us spirits than meets the eye, Takakun. I will try to navigate you to the shrine, but if Suryuri does not want us there, then we will simply not get there. The only the only places we can navigate to directly are our home and the village. I can use gate magic, but that takes a super long time to cast, and unless I consciously really heard. He usually ends up just taking us someplace. Uh, not fun. I think I'll prefer taking the ground route. But uh, thanks for the offer. Make a chan, was it? That's right. Sakura no Mako, at your service. Yay, my first human friend. Silly girl. Not that I doubt your navigation skills or anything. Crossed this path a while ago. Oh, you're right. Why are we back here on this side? Huh? I thought you were leading the way. Wait! I think if we turn this way, cut through the cut through these trees here, we might <laughs> The girl seemingly disappeared out of sight as she stepped in between two tall trunks. Followed by a loud splash. 
I ran towards the trees and looked down to see the girl arms flailing wildly, neck deep in a slow moving river. Ah! A man saw me! A man saw me! Quick, please, you have to help her. I'm begging you. I'll, I'll do whatever you want. Just please save her! Help! It doesn't look that deep, you know. Don't tell me that your sister can't. She can't swim. Neither of us can. Please. Takaharu-sama, please rescue my sister. <laughs> <laughs> the awkwardness I get into. I... I guess I don't have a choice. Smiling weakly, I pulled off my jacket and dove into the river. Cold water setting shivers down my spine as I swam to Nichiko, despite the lack of a strong current, was slowly disappearing under the water. Urged on by the worried shouts of Meiko, I tried to reach the girl as quickly as possible. It took me a few strokes before I reached her, but by the time I had a grab hold of her and pulled her out of the water, she had lost consciousness. She's not breathing. I felt my stomach drop dreadful thoughts of what I had of what might happen if I if I didn't do something began to fill my mind. But what in the world could I possibly do? CPR? I I don't know what that is. She's not breathing. Help her, please save her. Oh that's someone please wake up. Oh my god. Okay, but I need to concentrate something to dry her off with? Right. Great. Make sure to have a revive spell. As if trying to steal my nerves for what I was about to do, I muttered those words just before leaning in. All I could, all I could remember from my first day, from my first aid training was that the patient had to be in a so-called recovery position. And I had to blow air into their mouth and push down on their chest. My heart pounded faster and faster as I looked down at the fox door. I could feel my cheeks heating up as I blush <laughs> as I blush spread across my face. Luckily, I put her into what I hoped was the right position and slowly lowered myself towards her face. My lips parted. If you were this desperate for a kiss, <laughs> <laughs> you could have just asked. I know I am a beautiful, exquisite creature, but pushing me into a river so you can play a hero is a bit too much, Takakun. <laughs> oh my god. Quite the situation. It, it, it's not like that. I went in to save you. Oh, why thank you, oh valid hero, for your rescue, I must admit. I am not the greatest swimmer. But you know, it is often better to get permission from the maiden you rescued before you claim them as your reward, silly. <laughs> oh my god! Kill me. I didn't have a choice. I either claimed your lips, or death will claim you instead. Ah, and a bold choice that was. Where's Mako? Well, if she didn't try to save me first, she is even worse at swimming than I am. She's fine, she should be heading back here right now. I believe we have enough time. So how about it, Takakun? <laughs> My little sister will be back in a few moments, and I am sure a boy like you <laughs> have probably never kissed a girl before, so how about it? Want to claim these maiden skin <laughs> lips? <laughs> Why am I reading this? 
don't make me toss you back into the river. <laughs> Aww, such a shame, dude. I was looking forward to finding out just how sweet your lips taste. <laughs> God. Mageco, how bad are you? I'm not sure I want to find out what a wet fox tastes like. Oh, I assure you, it tastes a lot better when I'm wet. When I'm wet? <laughs> Are you kidding me? For some reason, I don't think we're talking about the same thing anymore. I felt my cheeks flushing up slightly as Mageko's teasing words, and I awkwardly scratched up my cheek. Anyway, at, at this rate, you're going to catch a cold. Then perhaps you should warm me up. Takakun, oh my god. More importantly, we need to get you out of those soggy clothes. Oh my. <laughs> so bold. Please, won't you unbutton my top? <laughs> oh, fucking kill me. It, if you insist. My fingers shook as I reached down to the laces of her. Bodies. Bodies. I was blushing brightly and my head was spinning as I felt my fingers touch the cloth. Before I could continue any further, I heard a whoosh behind me and felt something heavy impact against my body. My body toppled forwards and I felt a nasty blow to the back of the head the back of my head. Oh no, Sama! I brought the Oh no! Sakeharu! I could barely focus as the blonde fox girl began to fuss over me, but it was no good. Between running my butt off all day, the sudry tyrant, the following rescue, and now the blow to the head, I felt myself slip into unconsciousness. Later that day, dot dot dot, I was messed up past by the time I finally regained consciousness. First thing I noticed was something soft resting against me. Okay, one moment. I'm I'm gonna stop this recording. For a moment I wondered what it could be. Little did I know that whatever it was, I would soon be very oh, very much awake. Okay now. I would soon be very much awake, oh lord. M mage kill My voice caught in my throat, easily betrayed by my surprise at seeing the fuck spirit resting beside me. Of course it didn't help the f help that she was stark naked. My gaze drifted along her features. I I hadn't really put a lot of thought into it until now, but she really was beautiful. Shush! <laughs> yep. Uh, Naked Fox Girl! Yay! Everybody's favorite, am I right? Now's my chance. I have been curious about my... about something for a while now, and decided to finally get my answer. I carefully lifted my hand towards her head, my fingertips lightly caressing along a single furry ear. My surprise, the fur felt real. 
confirming my theory. So, she's a real fox spirit. Hey! As long as I looked over the peacefully sleeping girl, it was difficult to imagine someone like her being a penny-stealing troublemaker. Up close, she looked incredibly cute. And naked, then. And naked at that, no less. The fact that she was lying right beside me caused my cheeks to flare up beat red in an instant. Mm, no. Sir Yuri, not again. Is, is she dreaming? Amused by this, I reached a hand out to poke her cheek gently, but the sound of her footsteps made me reconsider. Ah! Takuharu! You're awake! Shh! Don't wake him, Nesama. She's a light sleep sleeper, and she's been super tired lately. Sure, sure. But, Miko-chan, mind explaining why your sister is sleeping next to me d d without clothes on? <laughs> you two look super cute. All cuddled up together earlier. Nesama said that you told her it was important that she took her clothes off, so she took hers off, and then we took yours off. After that, she tried to keep you both warm but by getting under the covers and laying in the sun. However, and then and she fell asleep. Were you watching me just now? Yep, you were both sleeping so soundly. It was super adorable. I wanted to cuddle up with you too, but Nesama told me off for cuddling with her in our sleep before. Oh. I, uh, think I get it. She does look rather adorable when she's sleeping like that. Let's keep that way for now, Mako. I took a deep breath. I was about to open my mouth to say something when Mako suddenly spoke up with a smile. We brought you home to our mansion. We brought you to a spare to our spare room because it has the best light during the day. I was only watching you for a bit, then I got bored, so I went and made some soup. Made some soup. Soup. Onesama always makes me soup when I feel bad. Do you want some? Sure, I could go for some soup, but Meko-chan, before that, I need to ask you a favor. Hmm? I need you good to go and get my clothes because I I'm kind of naked here. I lifted the blanket enough to allow a shameful glance at the cause of my current predicament. <laughs> my face visibly took on the shade of a tomato when I noticed Mako leaning over for a similar peek under the blanket, and I quickly closed the gap. I I think I. To stay under the blanket for a bit. Could you just bring me my clothes? Aww, you might wake her up if you don't go back to sleep, but fine. If you insist, I'll go get your clothes. You're no fun, you know. I wanted to see what a human looked like, but Anasama for forbid me from peeking. Oh my god! Yes. Please just go. <laughs> the girl almost skipped to the door, giggling to herself. The door slid open, and she hopped outside, vanishing behind the paper screen. Once I had 
confirmed that Mako had left the room, I turned my glance sideways, focusing back on the peaceful expression of the slumbering fox by my side. For a moment, I thought about the things the two girls had been accused of. Okay, so stealing underwear isn't exactly the nicest thing to do, but when I look at her like this, I can't picture her as anything but a normal girl. While the temptation to lift the blanket was strong, I felt a little nervous about the thought. Still, as much as I tried to hold myself back, I couldn't risk the temptation of turning to my side to get a better glance of her. Gingerly, I took a hold of the blanket. No, Takeharu, neither a gentleman nor a hero takes advantage of a sleeping lady. And yet... Who am I kidding? This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Takiharu. In the end, the perverted little devil within me won the morality struggle, and with shaking hands, I tried to lift the blanket. Stop. Yikes. I don't want any blackberries. As the very sheets I was laying on, my heart pounded louder than ever. Without a word, I dropped the blanket. She was still draping, mumbling away in her sleep, but she had scared the living daylights out of me. <laughs> After a while, Mako returned and deposited my now dry clothes in my lap. She smiled at me and lingered for a few moments, as if expecting me to begin changing. <laughs> oh, of course, the soup. I'll go get it now. But don't change too slowly, okay? I bet you'd hate me to sneak in a peek. <laughs> don't. Don't think guys spend as much time changing as girls. Wait, you were planning to peek on me? <laughs> <laughs> I occurred to me that perhaps Mako was more like a, her sister than I had first assumed. <laughs> it sure sounds like you know what you're talking about, Takiharu, and, well, I might have been thinking about it. I'm kind of curious about the difference between us foxes and you humans. Like, it was amazing how easily you carried Sis out of the water. Is it because you're human? Actually, I think it's probably because I'm a guy. We tend to be stronger than girls, not to mention. I practice judo almost every day. It would be embarrassing if I couldn't even carry a girl. Judo? J-U-D-O. It's a sport of sorts. Although it's also used for self-defense. Is that why you saved her? Because of this judo? Well, that's not really it. Ultimately, saving a damsel in distress hinges on a man's pride. Oh, can I see it? Your pride? And just what exactly are you looking for, little sister? Uh, well, next time, I, 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 was it? You're wrong. Uh, the soup. The soup's still cooking. I need to tend to it. The younger girl scrambled to her feet and dashed out of the room at full speed, her tail comically hanging between her legs as she did. I turned to Mechiko with a faint blush on my face over in my eyes so she, so she could pull the sheep back up around herself. Ah, I, I see you're finally awake. Mechiko san? With you two making such a fuss about Chudo and Soup, how could I possibly hope to get any sleep? I am glad to see that you are well, Takakun. Forgive me for taking such measures, but I fear that I wasn't getting warm fast enough and did what I thought was necessary. At least it was more enjoyable sleep than you would have had it in the cell, I doubt the Sundre Tyrant, was it? 
I doubt she would have given you the same service. But look. Let's just say that the hospitality was such a appreciated. <laughs> I am glad to hear that. If you would like to change, there is a screen just over there. I promise I won't look. Of course. I guess one of us has to do it. <laughs> I watched Mechko close her eyes, hiding her face and her hands as if reassure me that she wouldn't peek. Taking my chances, I climbed out from under the blanket and made my way towards the wooden screen. Once I reached it, I quickly began changing. If you could be so kind as do me a favor, Takaku, my robes should be upon the dresser behind you. Could you pass them to me, please? It would speed matters up greatly. Uh, uh, sure. Give me a second. After looking around for a moment, I found the robes neatly folded up on the dresser, my heart skipping a beat as I took a hold of them before turning towards the screen to hand them over. Say, Michiko-san, how come you two walk around stealing people's underwear? I mean, you don't look like bad people to me. Well, it is complicated. Mako was researching a spell she had wanted to perform, one that would allow us easier access to certain things we need. And one of the ingredients was a maiden silk. The only silk I could think of was... Well, you, you already know the answer. By maiden, by maiden silk, you mean? I guess I, I understand why you would think that, but isn't maiden silk another term for our, a wedding sash? It is in my world, at least. As I said this, the girl appeared from the other side of the screen. I, I never realized. <laughs> What's that, no, Sama? A maiden silk? It is a wedding sash. All our work was for naught. Oh. Well, at least a wedding sash will be easier to get. I'll just have to marry Takakun. What? <laughs> a few minutes later. Hmm. 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 After that little incident, we relocated to the kitchen. The smell of food filled the air. Despite the younger girl's easygoing attitude, always humming such some cheerful melody, I found my cheeks still burning from embarrassment. To think that a girl would say such a thing, I quickly shook my head to clear the thoughts from my mind and turned towards the elder sister. This soup is delicious. Is Mako-chan usually the one doing the cooking around here? Yay! I'm glad you like it, Takaharu. I don't usually cook, so I made a few lucky guesses. It is rather delicious, Mako-chan. Perhaps you could do more cooking from now on. It would allow me more time to lounge around. Well then. The first step of getting your wedding sash is, is to become a good housewife, and that includes cooking. I added this with a bit of amusement following Meichiko's comment. I took another sip of the soup, for a few lucky guesses, this dish uh, turned out pretty well. Mm, that's true. I'll learn how to clean and I'll cook for you. And, uh, I don't know what else, but it'll be fun learning. Mako, you should stop that. You know very well that it would be pointless for you to marry him. Only the villagers know how to craft a wedding sash. We both know this will not happen. Hmm, that's not necessarily true, Mako's son. 
It only becomes ever more evident that you are not of this world, Takakun. The villagers do not tolerate our existence. They despise us. We can never ask such a favor of them. All we have to do is to find some way to make the villagers accept you. But I guess I'll need to learn more about the village itself before we can do that. The pale-haired girl shook her head slowly, her ears flattening against her head as she as she did. It is not. It is not that simple. They would never trust us. Humans and fox spirits have never been able to get along. I am honestly surprised that you have been able to tolerate us this long. I would be happy to be proven wrong, and you are free to stay here as long as you wish. Until, of course, you too grew weary of our ways and decide to leave. Onesama, please don't say things like that. Takaharu wouldn't do that, would you, Takaharu? Of course not. I wouldn't abandon someone just because they're a different species. That's not the Kushiken uh, Takaharu does things. However, however, I do remember the village elder telling me that it wasn't just the fox spirits. Sounded like humans and spirits everywhere have been on bad terms for a long time. Do you know why, Mage Ghost On? I do not recall. Much information is withheld, even from someone such as myself. Most spirits keep them keep to themselves these days. There are a few exceptions. Suriri being one of them. Powerful spirits come and go as they please, but they tend to remain in their world. Fox spirits, however, have no other place to go. They are stuck in the human world, for better or, or for worse. Huh, I, I didn't realize it was like that, but I, I guess I, I'm finally learning stuff. Well, this Siri Yuri character lives in the shrine, right? You should try asking her for some ideas. Uh, no, 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 we do not need to go to see her. Absolutely not. No, I don't want to see her. I don't want to. I was somewhat taken aback by Michiko's suddenly childish way of speaking. It reminded me of the times I had to... I had been told to go visit the doctor when I was younger, complaining and throwing tantrums all along the way. But isn't she the only one that can help us? I refuse to go. Siri Yuri is a fiend, and I dislike the idea of spending even a second in her presence. She can't be that bad, can she? Besides, if anything happens, I'll protect her. But fine. If, if if it really means that much to you, I will attempt to lead you to the shrine again. But you will enter the grounds alone. I I don't want to go anywhere near that place. You will be on your own, Takakun. Can I come, Nesama? Absolutely not. I forbid it. You are not to follow us under any circun circumstances, Miko. Fine, I'll stay here. I'll stay here. Just like you said, I'll be here in the mansion. All alone, unprotected, all by myself. Who knows what might happen to me? I could get trapped under a bookcase and die. Or slip on a banana peel and die. Or get bored and die of boredom. I'd be so super bored sitting here all alone in the same place. Day in day out. Fine, fine, I get it. You may come along, but you, you must be on your best behavior, little one. No running around and no talking unless spoken to. Okay. 
<laughs> Despite Mako's cheerfulness, I couldn't help but wonder what had happened between Mageko and the Siriuri for her to react so strongly. I decided that maybe it wouldn't be a bad idea to spend some time with the two of them, with the two sisters to get to know them a bit better. Well, I do have two weeks until I need to get back to my own world, so there's really no need to rush. How about we do something else instead? I'm sure Mageko wouldn't mind the, the wouldn't mind the distraction. Hmm. Well, the longer I get to stay away from that place, the better. How about bringing Mako-chan along to go fetch some desserts for us? There are oranges, apples, and a small vineyard behind the mansion. I could whip up some cream to go with it, if you would like. Sure, that sounds easy enough. Let us get some delicious fruit, Mako-chan. Alright. <clears throat> As Mako leads me towards the garden of the impressive mansion, she seemed a little quiet, as though she had something on her mind. I wanted to ask her about it, but something about the way her ears sagged and her tail hung low told me that probably wasn't the best idea. I decided I would simply try to cheer her up. So, which do you prefer, Mako-chan? Apples, grapes, or oranges? We could gather all three, but I bet we can grab a few for ourselves first. Um, um, apples. I guess. I knew a fox spirit once, a friend of Onesama, who loved apples. I can't remember her name, though. I guess my head's a bit hollow. Apples are awesome. Crunchy on the outside, and sweet on the inside. And your head isn't hollow, silly. If that was true, I think I'd be stuck in that jail cell. Nesama did most of the thinking, though. I just... sort of... went along with what she said. Well, she... Well, someone has to take the lead. Besides, I'm still grateful for your help all the, all the same. How about... I, pay f I playfully flicked Mako's forehead with a grin. See, it doesn't sound hollow at all. I'm sure there's plenty of clever thoughts in that pretty little head of yours. Ow! Nini. Now, you know I'm right, at least. Anyway, let's get those apples, shall we? Okay, I'll get them. I'll get them. You go grab the basket over there. Alright, let's get down to business. Feeling hyped, I went to grab one of the baskets stacked nearby and returned to Mako, who had started climbing one of the trees. Okay. I am going to stop here. Thank you all for watching. I know there's a little CG coming up, so... Thank you all for watching, everybody. Peace out, keep on stuff, laters.